years to act to ultimately determine the future of our world. To determine the fate of our generation and generations to come. To determine whether we live or die. We are in the fight for the future of not just the planet, but for all of humanity. The climate crisis isn't just about the future, but it's about our lives. It's about the lives, it's about the air we breathe, the water we drink, the homes that turn to ash, the people who are washed out to sea. It's about those who are diagnosed with cancer and asthma as a result of this crisis. This crisis is about people like me. As a proud and unapologetic bisexual Latina, it's hard to it's hard to see so many members of my community being disproportionately affected by the climate crisis as I am diagnosed with asthma. I wake up at night with the feeling that I'm drowning, struggling to catch my breath. I can't scream for help, but hear me scream now. Hear me scream that my home state of Indiana is ranked 46 for air quality. As a result, that it's one of the top coal producers in the nation and second for coal consumption. Hear me scream that my senators, Senator Todd Young, has accepted $546,346 from the oil and gas industry. <laughs> Hear me scream that Senator Mike Braun, who was just elected only in 2018, has received $184,763 from oil and gas. They are the reason why I have to take three different types of medication. They are the reasons why neighborhoods in Indianapolis are plagued with COPD, cancer, asthma, and heart difficulties. Their complacency is killing me, it's killing us. I too faced the devastating effects of the climate crisis. When I was in sixth grade, I was diagnosed with heart palpitations as a result of living in Los Angeles, one of the most air polluted cities in America. I recall spending most of my middle school years in and out of the hospital. My parents were scared for me and still are to this day. Now that I, I, now that I have graduated from high school, and I'm on to college, I still notice that my community, the place that I call home, is being destroyed by the very thing that caused my issue. The state of California, <clears throat> the state of California is known to be the bluest state in America, but yet we are still affected by wildfires, droughts, and heat waves, and having communities where some of my friends and family members live near oil refineries, being affected day in, day out, that is not an excuse to not act on the climate crisis. It is not the communities of the rich and affluent Los Angeles that are affected by the climate crisis. It is the low income community, it is the low income communities of color that are. I too want my Senator, Diane Feinstein, to hear my voice as we as youth are dying. While you may not support the Green New Deal, it is what's necessary, it is what the youth demand. This isn't an issue of party. Democrats versus Republicans. This is a human rights issue and both parties alike are guilty. They are guilty of staying silent in the face of a burning world. Politicians don't simply get a medal for believing in facts because simply believing has never done anything for our communities. Oftentimes, oftentimes in our fight for climate justice, the climate movement and media tend to leave out the voices of frontline youth and youth of color. But we are here to say that we will no longer be silenced into submission by the media or the climate movement because it is ultimately benefiting Exxon, Chevron, and the Koch brothers who want us to stay silent. They know our power. They know that we are a threat. And for the politicians who sit in their fossil fuel funded thrones on Capitol Hill, mark my words, the youth are coming. Our voices and stories are crucial to exposing the fossil fuel industry for what it really is, which is an industry that profits on the human rights abuses.
our voices and stories will mark the pages of history books for years to come. We are the youth who took our pains and struggles and said that we refuse to be the last generation. We refuse to see our communities being destroyed for corporate profit. While little actions matter, what we need is a revolution. Because we are running out of time, frontline communities are out of time, and we need climate justice now. Frontline communities are here to lead the fight. We are here to take back the lives that were stolen from us. We don't have a hidden agenda. We, want to, we simply want to live. We are leading this fight because we can see through the bullshit and the lip service that politicians give us because they don't want to tell us to our faces that my wallet is more important than your life in your community. We are not afraid to call it like it is because we have nothing to lose. You have already stolen our childhoods, our health, our safety, our homes, but we will not let you take our future. Together, we will unite to be the last generation that changes the United States of, United States of America. We will be the generation to change the fate of, of, the, of the planet because we are tired of hearing the same discussions about solutions when we already know what must be done. We must act on the climate crisis. We, must, we don't have time to left ignoring the facts that the Amazon is being burnt or that pipelines are being built within indigenous communities. Having the climate crisis affecting our communities, our generations, and future generations to come isn't something I want. I don't only want politicians to hear the science, but I want them to act on the science. The climate crisis is a fact of life that people in Los Angeles and cities around the world are experiencing with every day. It isn't just a grave threat to our environment, but our health, to our communities, and it shouldn't be debatable. We have one last message to Congress and the White House. I am no longer asking for permission to live. I am demanding it. We are demanding it. The youth are here. And we are about to call the shots on our lives. You are either with us in this fight or you are against us. We are here as proof that frontline communities will overcome, that you have failed in silencing us. We are the leaders of now. We are the leaders of the future. And one day it is us who will fill the seats of Congress and the White House.